Today I'm sharing 25 frugal living tips. I do have a full blog post down below in the description, so definitely check that out for more information, more details on each of the tips. But these are gonna be in five categories. We're gonna talk about how to save money online, how to save money on gas, how to save money on laundry, how to save money on groceries, and how to save money in your everyday lifestyle. So I do wanna say that there is a difference between frugal and cheap. And we're gonna talk about frugal, not cheap. To me, I define cheap as more of someone that doesn't want to tip and they go to a restaurant and they're too cheap to tip and it kind of slimy feeling or cheap is something that I used to do in the past of buying low quality items because it was inexpensive versus investing in something that's going to last you and something that is going to be worth the money over time. So if you buy something cheap, it breaks in a day versus spending maybe five times as much or even two times as much or three times as much, but it's gonna last you a long time. It's better to invest in something versus just something that's cheap and gonna break. So that's the difference between frugal and cheap, at least how I define it. All right, kicking off, let's talk about how to save money on laundry. Now there are some things that we can do to save money on laundry. Number one is when you are putting clothes into the, to the washer, make sure that all the zippers are up. So if you have a hoodie, make sure the zippers are up or pants, make sure that those zippers are up because what happens is the claws of the zipper can attach to other clothes or really rough up the clothes and therefore cause damage, especially a shirt like this where it's almost like that that sheer type of material, this zippers will destroy. So make sure that your zippers are all the way up. And then when you do have shirts like this, what I do, this is a little bonus, so I guess 26, is I'll put these types of clothes into a mesh laundry bag so that it really helps protect them and it's not getting tossed around with all the other laundry. It's kind of protected its own little, its own little home of a little laundry bag. So I put anything in like this in a laundry bag, as well as anything that I don't want to go in the dryer so that it's easy for me to pick out and that like my bras, I don't want my bras going in the dryer. I hang dry those. So therefore I put them in the mesh laundry bag just to protect them. And then also so I know to make sure I take them out before transferring things to the dryer. Next is cold water. You can wash your clothes on cold water and it is still gonna get them clean and it is gonna save a ton of money in your water heating bill and also the length of your clothes. When you're washing them in hot water, they're gonna shrink more, the colors are gonna run, the dye is gonna run, they're not gonna look dingy. So washing your clothes in cold water is really gonna help preserve them as well as lower that electric bill cost of the hot water versus just tap water cold. Next is do full loads of laundry. You don't want your wash to be over stuff, but make sure you're doing a full load of laundry and not like 10 items because that is really gonna help to make it worth a while and not just use all that water, all that electricity, all that heat when you're drying it on just a couple items. Big loads, make sure that you're getting your money's worth when you're doing a load of laundry. Next is hang dry as many clothes as you can. What I do is I try and hang as many of the items from the load that I can so that my drying load is smaller and therefore it'll dry quicker. So I will hang dry a lot of shirts or like t-shirts that I'm just wearing on the house or wearing a bed that they don't need to be super pristine or anything like that. If they have a couple of wrinkles, it's totally fine. I'm only wearing a bed and that way it really helps to speed up that drying process because it's a smaller load. Also anything that is may shrink or just the fabric you really can't dry, hang dry those and that's gonna help with the load. Another bonus tip that I actually just remembered as I'm talking, so this is a spur of the moment one, is get your dryer vents cleaned. Did you know that your dryer vents in the whole process, the all the lint that goes down into your dryer as well as the dryer vent, all of that can really slow down your dryer make it take longer to dry, and it is very dangerous and cause fires in your house. We actually just got a quote for getting our dryer vent cleaned, and it was only $109. I honestly thought it would be more around the $500 range, 
but only $109. So that is actually something that we're going to have coming up this week to get our dry rent cleaned because it's so important and it's going to save us money in the long run by reducing our dry times, which is a win-win. This doesn't have anything to do with the video, but I just want to say something because I know that I will get comments of me not wearing a wedding ring. And that is because I have a pinched nerve right now in my whole left side, my whole left arm, hand, and leg is all numb and tingly. I've been dealing with it for like four days now. It happened a lot in my pregnancy, and now it's having happening again postpartum. But my hand is swollen, and it is very painful to wear my wedding ring, so I took them off, and I haven't worn them for a couple days. So there's nothing wrong with my marriage or going on with Jamie and I. Sorry for the for the gossip, but or lack thereof of gossip, but just want to address it because I know I'll get lots of comments, but pinch nerve. That's why I'm not wearing a wedding ring. Okay. Online shopping. How to save money online shopping. This one really is big on stores like Amazon, or if you are tend to shop at a certain place, like even Walmart or Target and do a lot of orders throughout the week. I know that I've been so guilty of this, especially when I had insomnia in my pregnancy and then those 3 a.m. feedings that I was feeding Peyton and I would just be browsing Amazon and making these random 3 a.m. purchases. So what I've done and something that I think would really help you is to only check out once a week. So if you're shopping and if you're browsing or think of an idea of, hey, I need to pick this up at Amazon or order it, of add them to your cart, but pick a day of the week that you only check out. So what I mean by this is as you're going throughout your week, add things to your cart for Amazon, but Saturday morning, you're gonna look at your cart and you're gonna assess it. And you're gonna say, okay, do I really need this? Yes or no? If the answer is no, remove from cart. Now you may want to move it to a wish list. That's something that I do is if I still want the item but I don't need it right now, or if it would make a great gift down the road, I'll move it to a wish list. And that way when Christmas comes, my birthday comes, Mother's Day comes, could celebrate Mother's Day now. Mother's Day comes, I can give this list to my family, to my husband, and say, hey, these are some things that would be some great ideas for me if you're looking for gift ideas. That way you know that you like what you're getting and it's something that you actually use. So if you are moving things to your wish list or just simply saying, why did I want that at three o'clock in the morning? I will never use that or I will only use that once, then you can ruin the item. So on Saturday mornings or whatever day you choose, really sit down and evaluate, is this something that I need? Yes, no. If it is, great, continue, proceed to check out and purchase the items in your cart. Now, if you are doing this, chances are your order's gonna be over $35, right? So therefore it would qualify for free shipping. So if you are wanting to eliminate your subscriptions, then this could be a great way that you can eliminate Amazon subscription, which is what, $120, they just upped their price, $129 a year. So that's a huge savings right there. You're already gonna get the two-day shipping, you're already getting free shipping because it's over $35, so you can save money on your Amazon subscription. That'll also help to prevent you from shopping throughout the week because you know, I gotta wait till Saturday so that I don't have to pay for shipping when we eliminate that subscription. Next, going along with that is evaluate your subscriptions. Really look at them and really say, okay, are these subscriptions that we really want? Do we really need them? Yes, no. We had this recently with HBO Max. My husband purchased HBO Max or enrolled in it because we wanted to watch that Monopoly documentary, the one with McDonald's Monopoly. Have you guys watched that? Ooh, it is intense. And there's a whole scheme between behind the Monopoly McDonald's game from the 90s, 2000s. And do we want to watch that documentary? Fast forward to six months later, we still have it. We don't even watch anything on HBO. So we can then cancel that subscription. So really sit down and evaluate your subscriptions. This is also why it's really important to have a budget so that you see what's hitting your bank account every single month. Those $4.99 purchases, those 99 cent purchases on Apple or Amazon or different things like that, they really add up quick. And if they're just hitting your account, hitting your account, and you're just kind of like scrolling through your account, you don't really realize it, your bank account, then, it is what it is, whatever. But if you're logging your purchases every single month in a budget, this is really gonna help you to say, hey, we need to do something about this or I'm not using this, let's cancel it. So evaluate your subscriptions. Also cancel free trials. If you are enrolling in something for the free trial, set a calendar reminder to cancel that 
that trial. So I want to cancel Hulu after the the 30 day trial and or I want to cancel Audible after the 30 day trial. So really go and put in your calendar, cancel blah 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 on that date so that you don't forget. The next way to save money on online shopping is to delete your card from your saved computer. So from your computer or your phone as a saved card. I know that this makes checkout so much faster, but honestly, there's times where I delete the card and then I go to make a purchase and I had to get up, I have to walk to my purse, get the card, come back to the couch, put it in, get up again, put it back in my purse so I don't forget and leave without my wallet because I've done that when I left it on the couch from an online purchase. So when I have to do all of that, I really evaluate, do I really want this? Is it worth getting up? If it's not worth getting up, yeah, we'll save some money and not buy it. So delete your credit cards, delete your debit cards from your saved devices. That's really going to help to cut back on that online spending. Next is return items that you don't want. If an item is not as good quality, it doesn't fit right, it's just not what you're expecting, return it and return it right away. Don't procrastinate. Don't wait until it's after 30 days and oh well, or let it just sit in your car. Do it right away. Make sure that you stay on top of your returns because that's a lot of money and it adds up quick if you are not returning those items. Next is how to save money on gas. Now, if you are someone that is traveling a lot, I really recommend grouping your errands, grouping when you have to go to the grocery store and get gas and go to the pharmacy or go to the bank. Group all of those errands if they're in a particular part of town or if they're in a town that's 15, 20 minutes away. That's what it was when I grew up. We honestly had nothing but a blinking light, not even a real blinking light, but a red blinking light in our town. And we had to travel 20 minutes to go to a grocery store. So what you want to do with that is go and group them all together so you're not going back and forth every day like oh today I'll go to the grocery store oh today I'll go into town to go to the bank oh today I'll go into town to get gas no group them all on the same day or the same afternoon so that you're hitting them all in one area in one time next is get gas on Mondays did you know that gas stations actually has lower price on Monday and higher price on Friday in the weekend so fill up your tank on a Monday that's really gonna be the cheapest day of the week and also fill up away from a highway Gas stations right on the highway, right off the highway are gonna be most expensive. And ones that are maybe 10, 15 minutes into town are gonna to be cheaper because as people are traveling, you don't want, if you're on a road trip, you don't wanna go five, 10 minutes into town. You wanna to get the gas station that's right there. So always go a little bit out into town rather than right by the highway. Next is use cashback apps. Use apps like Get Upside and Fetch Rewards and Gas Buddy that allow you to earn cash back in the form of actual cash into your PayPal or your bank account or gift cards. Use code FIAB20 with Get Upside or it's Upside now. They drop the get with Upside and you can earn up to 20 cents cash back per gallon when you fill up. They also offer cash back on restaurants and groceries in select places as well. Well, and you can double dip with your cashback app. So you can get a receipt, use it in Upside, and then also use it in Fetch Rewards, which is amazing. I love both apps. So use them on your gas and use that. You're going to be spending money on gas anyways. You might as well get some cash back as well. I have a full tutorial playlist review, all of that on all of the apps, as well as a breakdown of multiple cashback apps. I'll have it linked down below in the description box. Next is pair that with a credit card. Pair that with a cashback earning credit card. I'll have the one that I use linked down below. It's a Chase Freedom card. And then you can double dip or triple dip. You can get rewards from get upside or upside fetch rewards and your credit card. So yes, gas is expensive, but we can use that and get some cash back and make it a little less painful because let's be honest, it's painful filling up your tank right now. Next is take care of your car. Take care of your car and get oil changed. Make sure that your air filter is changed. You're getting tune-ups and inspection. And make sure your car is running at full capacity. Make sure that is running the most efficiently that it can. Your tire pressure, that's another great one. So make sure that everything is working properly so that you're getting the best system to use your car, so can't think of the words, but so that your car is running properly. Next is watch how you drive. Are you 
fire out jackrabbiting as soon as the right light turns green and your RPMs are skyrocketing, or are you just kind of slowly accelerating and it's not a race at the green light? Yes, I know it's a lot easier just to jack up those RPMs and get right up to it, but that is really going to make your engine work harder and therefore it's going to burn through more gas. Also, turn off your car if you're waiting. If you are sitting at Walmart grocery pickup or Target pickup, turn off your car if it's gonna be a few minutes. Now, if it's gonna be quick, then it is gonna take more gas to start up your car, but most likely it's gonna save money on gas if you turn off your car and restart it, then letting it run idle. Next is how to save money on groceries. First thing with saving money on groceries is Check your pantry, check your freezer, check your fridge before you make your meal plan and before you go to the store. There have been so many times where I think of a meal plan and I come up with my list and I'm like, okay, yep, I get home and I have three of those and I only need one. So check your pantry, check your fridge, check your freezer. Also make a meal plan around those items and say, okay, I have chicken in the freezer, I have green beans, I have corn, I have whatever it is, what can I add addition to that to make a meal around it? So I wanna use as many items in my fridge, in my freezer as possible versus just just coming up with new items and then it just kind of collecting, collecting, collecting. I know that there's been times where I bought in nice steaks and I'm like, a special occasion, a special occasion, I wanna use them right now. Next thing I know, it's been six months to a year and they're starting to get freezer burn. So use those items. Don't let them build up. And if you've ever lost a fridge or a freezer, which I have, it sucks. A lot of times you have to throw all that meat away, all that food away. So yes, it's good to stock up when you get a, get, when you get a good price, but use the items. Don't save them for a special occasion. Use the items. Also, have an inventory of the foods that you have. I have printables for you guys. We'll have linked them down below of freezer inventory, pantry inventory, spices, fridge, so that you know at a given time what you have on hand and how you can make a meal plan around that. Next is to try grocery pickup, try Walmart pickup, Target pickup, and use that to cut back on impulse spending. Use that so that you're not shopping through the store and be like, oh, that looks good. Another great thing with curbside pickup is you can see your tally as you go. So you can see as you're adding things to your cart what the total Total is and therefore if you're over budget you can cut that item right then or go through and adjust versus saying at the at the cash register I'm too embarrassed to put something back I'm over budget oh well it's fine no put something back and if you're using the online ordering you can see right there without the embarrassing mint of putting things back but honestly guys there's been times that where I've had to put things back and they'll never see you again. They won't remember you. They're Joe Schmo behind you. He's not going to judge you. And if he does, who cares? It's 30 seconds down the road. He judging you. There's other issues going on with him, not with you. So don't be embarrassed to put things back if you do go over budget. But curbside pickup is a great way to save money because you can see everything right there and you're going to cut back on impulse spending. And then also while you're sitting on your couch, you can run to the pantry to see what you've got and if you need a more or not. One thing that I do, and this will work with grocery pickup or shopping in the store, I keep my grocery list in my app on my phone. I use the Nost app and if I'm running out of milk or running low on eggs or ketchup, I will add it throughout the week as we need things so that I don't forget and be like, there was something I ran out of. What the heck was it? And I can't remember. And then you're like, oh, then you gotta make another trip to the store. Maybe you have to go back into town again, but throughout the week you can add things in here. I do the list in order of the grocery store and so that I can know the aisles because I know every Aldi Leo. I've even had people call me and be like, hey, where is this? And I'm like, oh, that is in between this item and this item. And it's kind of down below. There's only two of them. So you really have to look, but it's there. It's on the shelf and just look, just look right next to the chips. You'll see the salsa right there. And they're like, oh, there it is. I walked right past it. So I do it in order of the grocery store, but this really will help me know as I'm shopping, I also use the check boxes as, as I get the item. And sometimes if they are out, I leave it and then I evaluate, do I want this next week or do I just, I can do without, I can make a substitution and use something else. And that way I can 
roll it over to the next week or I can just clear it out completely. But I love those little check boxes in the app as well. Next is to buy generic. And when you're buying generic, it's gonna save you between 10 and 30%. It is incredible how much cheaper generic is versus name brand stores. For instance, formula right now, I buy the Target Up and Up brand, the 35 ounce container, and that is $19.99. The Enfamil one that is 30 ounces, so five ounces less, is $42 right now. That is over half the price. That is insane. Now, most generic is only 10 to 30%, but sometimes you do have those items that is a big, big difference. And honestly, guys, the quality is just as good. It's often made in the same exact factory. It's the same exact product. Just one goes to this container and one goes to this container, but it is the same exact food going to the two different containers with the two different labels. So buy generic. And with a trick with this, if you're using curbside pickup, do the generic options and allow substitutions because if they don't have it in the generic, they will upgrade you to the name brand. So if you're doing orange juice and you buy the Walmart brand orange juice, then they're out of it. They're going to upgrade you to the Tropicana, the same exact one or the same thing with cream cheese or whatever the brand is, they're gonna upgrade you for the same price. There's no additional charge. Check out my video that I have where I compared Aldi to Walmart and showed the cost breakdown of a couple different meals where I went through all the ingredients to make those meals and the cost difference of them. It's a really good video, really fun. So go definitely check that out. It'll be linked down below in the description. Next is to use cashback apps for groceries, just like gas. You're already gonna be spending money on groceries. You might as well get some cash back. I love Fetch Rewards. That's my favorite, favorite, favorite cashback app, Fetch Rewards. If you use code QHKBH, you get 2,000 points, which equals $2. And you can also double dip. So you can use Fetch Rewards, and then you can also use apps like Ibotta or Checkout 51 and use multiple apps or Shopkick, multiple apps on the same exact receipt, on the same exact purchase, which is so cool. And I just love earning cash back because I'm already me spending money, I want some cash back. Next is how to save money in lifestyle and everyday life. Number one is the library, the local library. When I grew up as a kid, we went to the library all the time. Well, there was literally nothing to do in my town, guys. Nothing. And our library was like, it's it was smaller than my living room. Like I remember when they added a bathroom to the library because it was the building's over 100 years old. And it was a big deal that there was a bathroom and plumbing in the library. <laughs> grew up in the boondocks guys. But I used to go to the library all the time because there was nothing to do. So I would check out books and movies and different things like that. I feel like a lot of people have gotten away from the library with the internet, but there's so much that the library has to offer. The library has audiobooks that you can link it. So you can use Overdrive, you can use Libby depending on which one they use, but you can get audiobooks to your phone so you don't have to pay for Audible and you can get a great selection of audiobooks. They also have a lot of activities especially with kids. I cannot wait to bring Peyton to the library and all the free activities, different things like that, and also take advantage of the books that they have, the movies. And if I don't want to stream something, I can do it right from those apps or at the library, I can actually get the physical copy as well. So utilize your library. It's going to be really fun. It's a great way to find free activities. Going along with that free activities is Facebook. Did you know that a lot of your cities and surrounding cities will have Facebook pages that they'll post live events or free events for the family? If there's a, a fall festival coming to town or a movie in the park or whatever it may be, something with the firefighters or the canine police dogs, an event that they're having, check out those activities and really look to see, okay, what can we do as a family? What's fun? What's free? What can we do to get outside? Those are really gonna be a great way to entertain yourself for free or a low cost. Or if you have a fair coming to town, they're gonna to post it so you can get those tickets right away and pay the cheapest amount before it goes a lot higher. We went to the South Florida fair and we were able to get tickets for only $10, where I think if you bought them at the door, it was like 25 or $30. So that's a huge savings of $10 to $30 because we bought ahead and we bought online. So. We learned that from Facebook. So definitely check out those Facebook pages. They're gonna save you a lot of money. Next is to try a no spend challenge. Now, a lot of people, no spends, some people like them, some people don't. But what you can do with a no spend challenge that a lot of people don't really think about is do them in categories. So versus no spend across the board, can't spend any money except for our bills. Yeah, I've been there. 
I did that when I was paying off my debt. But what you can also do is no spend on clothes this month, no spend on eating out, no spend on Starbucks, no spend on extra purchases at the gas station or whatever it may be, but have a category of no spend. I have a free friend will that I'll have down below for you guys of a spending checklist that really helps you to evaluate if you want to purchase or not. And it's really going to help to reset those triggers, those spending triggers and say, is this a good purchase? Yes, no. I'll have that link for you down below in the description. But a no spend month is really going to help you just to reset and save some big money. Also with that, a savings challenge. Use a savings challenge to help you to really save some money, get some motivation, get some visual motivation. I have printables, I have videos that I do these all the time, even to this day, when I'm looking to save money for a vacation or I'm looking to, to contribute my full amount to my IRA or an investment property, I use those colorings. I even have them for YouTube monetization. I have a second channel, Shameless Plug Tutorials for Entrepreneurs with Kelly Ann Smith, that I'm coloring in my monetization goals because I like the visual aspect of it. So I'm using it in my YouTube channel to grow and track my subscribers, track my watch time, but and it's the same with money and the same with savings. So definitely check those out. I'll have them down below. I also have tons of videos on saving challenges. You guys love saving challenges. I'll probably do another one soon because you guys love them and always blow them up. So do a savings challenge. That's really gonna help you to motivate you to see that visually of, hey, we're making big progress. Or if I sacrifice this, if I skip this dinner out, I get to color in another circle and it gets me closer to my goals when I transfer that money to savings or I transfer that money to debt. I love that. It's amazing. Next is to pay down your debt. Stop paying those high interest on your credit cards or your high interest debt. Pay it down. That's going to save so much money in interest. Now there's different debt payoff methods and which debt payoff method is best for you? The one that you stick to. Whether you want to do the debt snowball or the debt avalanche, honestly guys, I don't care. Just stick to one and the one that works for you is the best method. It is so personal and honestly guys, paying off debt is really going to help you to progress your goals to a huge accomplishment and you're going to save money in interest because guys, when you're paying 20% interest on a credit card, whoo, that adds up. Now I'm not anti-credit card, but I'm anti-credit card if you don't know how to use a credit card responsibly. You need to learn how to use a credit card, learn those spending triggers. And if you're maxing out your cards, oh, I'll just, it's okay. I'll just pay the minimums. Mm -mm. If you cannot pay your credit card off in full every single month, zero balance, you should not have a credit card in my opinion. Yeah, I said it, but it is what it is. Next, on a lighter note, is date nights at home. Have date nights. Guys, it is so important to date your spouse. So important. My husband travels a lot. And honestly, guys, just being real with you guys and being transparent, it's hard. It's hard having those date nights because when he comes home from traveling, he's exhausted. And I'm exhausted from taking care of the baby. But it's so important to work on a relationship. And now that we have a baby, it's even harder to get out and do date nights. But have them at home, cook a nice meal, play a game together, watch a movie together, just sit and talk together. Having those at home date nights, it's really going to help to bond you and to keep your marriage alive, keep your relationship alive. It is so important and you don't have to go out to have a date. You want to write at home. Next is to travel in the off season. If you are wanting to come to Florida, I live in South Florida. If you're wanting to come in Florida, it's honestly going to be cheaper in the summer than it is in the, the spring with the fall or the winter. Why? Because it's a bajillion degrees here in the summer and it's off season. So you can save a lot of money. Or if you're wanting to go watch, you know, to New England or different places, go in the off season. It's really gonna help reduce those airline flights. It's really gonna help to reduce a lot of costs. A lot of hotels will give discounts. Airbnbs will give discounts in the off season. So definitely check those out. And it may not be a prime time to go, but crowds will be less. The temperature may be a little higher or lower, but it's gonna save you a ton, ton, ton of money. Let's keep the conversation going. If you want to increase your income, so not only save money, but increase your money, check out five passive income ideas that can make you over $1,000 a month. Check this video out here. And if you want my full review on Get Upside or Upside and how to save money on gas, how to earn cash back on your gas, check out this video here. Hey, no, no, no.